<laughs> Greetings, folks. This is Joseph A. Sabora. As we continue with the Star Wars original trilogy, I'm going to review the very first sequel of the original Star Wars, which is called The Empire Strikes Back, or simply called Episode 5 which turned out to be, as we know it, one of the best sequels ever made. It stars Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Billy D. Williams, Anthony Daniels, Kenny Baker, Peter Mayhew, David Prowse, also the voice of Darth Vader by James Earl Jones, Frank Oz, Jeremy Bullock, Alex Guinness, John Ratzenberger, who later became, as we know it, the character Cliff from Cheers, as well as um, doing some voice work for Pixar movies. This time, George Lucas did not wrote and direct the whole movie, so he only became the executive producer, not to mention he wrote uh, some of the stories you know, that's based upon the original. So now he hires Lee Brackett, uh, who wrote the first draft uh, before she passed away, and Lawrence Kasdan, who now writes the second draft, who is just already working on Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was the first movie of the Indiana Jones series. And it's directed by Ivan Kirshner, who later went on to direct the film Wobocop 2. The movie begins three years ago after the destruction of the Death Star, which earned um, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and the rest of the crew their medals for honor. The Rebel Alliance had been driven to their former base on Yavin 4 by Galactic Empire. Princess Leia, who's played by Carrie Fisher, leads a convention including Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, both played by Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill, to lead inside a new base on an icy planet called Hoth. The Imperial fleet that's led by Lord Darth Vader, you know, played by David Prowse but voiced by James O. Jones, continues to hunt the rebels on their new base by dispatching probe droids across the galaxy. While investigating the potential meteor strike, Luke is being ambushed by an abominable snowman type creature named Wamba. Therefore, he managed to escape from the cave with his lightsaber and actually slices his arm. But what soon suffers from a snowy wasteland temperatures, he later heard the spirit of his late mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was played by Alex Guinness, who instructs him to go to the Dekobot system to train under a Jedi Master named Master Yoda, who is voiced by Frank Oz, you know, who actually performed, by the way. He's being found by Han, who uses the warmth of his dead Tantan for shelter and brings him back to the base to recover. But on patrol, Han and Chewbacca, who's played by you know, Peter Mayhew, discovers that the asteroid is actually a probe droid, which alert the Imperial fleet to the rebel location. The Empire launches a large-scale attack using a gigantic or at, at walkers, or I guess it could be stand for at at walkers, to capture the base. Yeah, those are one of those giant uh, you know, walkers that look exactly like, you know, elephants or some kind. But it actually shoots um, against all the ships uh, between <clears throat> already that's set inside the uh, icy uh, snow ground of, of Hoff. Yeah, that's the best scene of all. Anyway, Han and Leia had escaped on the Millennium Falcon with C-3PO, you know, voiced by, by Anthony Daniels, you know, along with Chewbacca, but unfortunately, the hyperspace had, 
had driven some malfunctions, so unfortunately it was broken. So they hide in, into the asteroid field where Han and Leia decided to grow closer to each other. So Bader wants up submarine bounty hunters, which includes the notorious uh, Boba Fett, which he was introduced in the holiday special, you know, with the animated uh, cartoon that they had. Yeah, because now we know his character. So he's being assisted to finding the Falcon, but then suddenly Luke winds up escaping with R2-D2 at his X-Wing fighter, and winds up uh, crash landing on the swamp, but he finally meets the, the creature who actually reveals himself as Yoda. So after uh, conferring with Obi-Wan Kenobi's spirit, Yoda reluctantly accepts Luke at his poopo. So after evading the Emperor fleet, Han sets a course for Cloud City in disguise on the planet uh, Bespin that's run by Han's old friend, Landell Caressian, who's played by Billy D. Williams. What he doesn't know is that the Millennium Falcon has been tracked by Boba Fett you know, shortly after they arrive, so that means now uh, Darth Vader had, had arrived on the scene just when they were ready to prepare for dinner. So now the, the crew has been captured and it was already sentenced uh, Han Solo inside a carbon freezing block of carbonite, so now he's being uh, frozen together. So now as the stormtroopers decide to take the carbonites, yeah, with Boba Fett joining in, that's what leads to the biggest uh, battle of all time when, when Han Solo has been chosen to um, fight against uh, Darth Vader for the very first time. Now I'm not going to give away the reveal of the film because I know everybody has seen this movie many times, but nevertheless... I really love this movie. It became one of my favorite sequels that's right next to the original Star Wars. Not to mention, this is one of the darkest uh, sequels uh, ever made. In fact, it's a lot different from the original film. Because this time, uh, it almost felt more like, instead of being, you know, the original Star Wars, which is, which is shot in the, in the 70s, it looked more like now we're getting into the new Star Wars for the early 80s. The 80s has started to change a bit after that. So now uh, this time it's it's even better because now we get to see a different side of the characters. It had some better improvements with the story. I mean, now that George Lucas is no longer uh, you know writing and directing the story, you know, we got some good writers like Lawrence Kasdan. And uh, Lee Brackett, who passed away later due to cancer, but I gotta say they really did improve everything there, and and we get to see some more character developments uh, with the rest, and and I love the new characters that they join. I mean, let's face it, I thought Yoda uh, was one of the best characters that we ever had in the series because I really love his character. He was, I mean, in a way. Considering that Frank Oz had performed uh, Yoda, I could tell that he actually echoes uh, Grover. Because after all, Grover is one of my favorite characters of the Sesame Street. Yeah, and he's always been one of my favorite characters of all time. So now I figured, yeah, there's a good connection here. Because Frank Oz did do the voice of Grover. So it makes sense that he sounds exactly alike. So, yeah, I, I always picture him too, but yes, he's he's also one of the strongest considering how small he is, you know, for a creature. I mean, he could definitely uh, use the Force completely, even though he has to train uh, Luke Skywalker on how to use the Force, you know, how to use it strongly and gently, you know, at this rate, you know. Like he said in the movie, do or do not. There is no try. Yeah. Definitely the perfect character to have. And I also uh, love uh, Lando Christian, who's played by Billy D. Williams. Yeah, definitely a good choice to have him. So, because they don't want to get into this whole, uh, whole cultural racial thing. Because this was the first time we ever saw a black character 
in, in the movie. So that's really cool that they had Billy D. Williams because he's a good actor too. I, I I love Billy D. Williams and several of those movies he's been in uh, back in the seventies um, that I've seen him in, and I, he's definitely the right choice to play him. Yeah, considering the fact that he's best friends with Han Solo, so that's cool. Yeah. And after all, you know, the Millennium Falcon was really uh, his ship, so, so they had to work together. So, because that's what's going to lead to in the the third movie, which is Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So now he gets to do something. Some great special effects too. I mean, definitely right up there with the original. Um, it was really interesting to see more of the battle that's happening this time underground instead of up in space so that's pretty rare that's something you never thought you would see in this uh, Star Wars uh, sequel that's what made this movie even better once again Harrison Ford, Mark Campbell and Carrie Fisher all did excellent jobs as Han Solo, Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia I mean they definitely work together as a team you know, along with Chewbacca, C-3PO, and R2-D2. Yeah, because, let's face it, they were the real heroes. You know, before the prequels came along. Anyway, <clears throat> also, um, in the 1997 special edition of The Empire Strikes Back, which I saw in theaters, they did do some improvements, um, with the quality of the film because this time around we actually got to see more of the abominable snowman type creature named Wamba so we now get to see more of him in that one scene you know just when he was about to eat some more food and while uh, Luke Skywalker was about to escape by using his lightsaber and, and slashes his arm yeah that, that was a good improvement I have to admit that yeah, so there was no complaint on that. And they also fixed the the background of the planet uh, Bespin. Yeah, because in the original it was all animated. So like they must have uh, used, a, used some, somewhat of a painting there. So they did improve that. I think it looked a lot better than, than what the original um, theatrical release actually looked. So I have to admit that they did do some improvements. However, in the 2004 special edition, they did actually fix um, the Emperor. And of course, this was the first movie that introduced us to the Emperor. So we now get to see him as shown in, in Return of the Jedi. To now make him look more like how he was um, when you last saw him in Revenge of the Sith, which is episode 3. Yeah, and, well, I wasn't... I gotta admit, it was okay for that change, but because it did sort of fix his face very well, because because to be fair, in, in the original he does look like somewhat of a uh, like like a frog or something. Yeah, I, I have to admit, he does look like a a frog, and when they showed the the emperor, but I guess I think it could be an interesting improvement, but it's not. But otherwise, it's just. Um, you know, it, it was kind of unnecessary in a way, but um, that, that's how I felt in my opinion when I saw that. Because like I said, I'm not a big fan of of Lucas's changes in the series because it just doesn't seem right to me. But there are times when I think he did improve better. Also, has a nice change of pace. It was great to see Body Hunter uh, Boba Fett. Too. I have to admit he was one of the coolest characters. Um, ever in the Star Wars uh, series. But I, I have to say, one of the funniest parts in the movie was when uh, <laughs> C-3PO actually falls apart, you know? And and Chewbacca was trying to put him back together again, and, <laughs> and, and Chewbacca was like using him as a backpack. Just when they were about to escape from the Stormtroopers, Darth Vader, and, and Boba Fett, you know? <laughs> I mean that 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 has to be really funny. I, I I love that scene and and then there are times when you know when they're trying to go on the Millennium Falcon just to escape, the light speed has already been malfunctioned. It got screwed up, and then he's and then Hansel once again just keeps saying, 
Oh, none of this is my fault! Yeah, and then Lando said the same thing at, at the end of the, almost towards the end of the movie when he was about to escape. I mean, what the hell? It's like, it's like they almost, yeah, they're actually almost blaming them for, for the light speed that's already been a function. And then, yeah, kind of like when uh, C-3PO always blames it on R2-D2 in the first movie. So, so that's how it happened. Yeah. But either way, um, it still uh, holds up as one of the best sequels ever made. Um, definitely check it out, too, if you love uh, the original Star Wars. So anyway, I give Empire Strikes Back five stars. I'm Joseph Vincent Barra, and may the Force be with you. Bye.